Hello, so this video is about admin pages, privacy and conditions you can use to restrict access to certain users. Of course, as a quick note, you know, if you want to find a way, there's always a way, but these kind of safeguards should help you against uh, most use cases. So the most basic condition you can have is perhaps you have profile descriptions, and of course you don't want everyone to be able to see or click the edit button so you can make it invisible on page load and not clickable and only when a certain condition is fulfilled like for example this uh, page's list creator is the current user then you can make it visible or not clickable or only you could have a group around it only when the parent group's user is equal to the current user then you can make it visible and clickable on a slightly harder level. So this is how this video will go. We'll keep on building security layers. So you could have an input called enter password, and you can actually only click enter, which is usually not clickable when the input enters password value is a certain password you can set yourself and then tell your users via email, phone, etc. And then you could actually also have the same condition on here on the button so for example only when the current user's email is your own email or maybe your co-founder's email only then will it actually continue with the workflow go to page index and uh, then in a similar way you can extend this to even create an admin header so i've gone underneath reusable elements and created my own work own one called admin header and then in this admin header you can't see anything because i've created a shape put it in front of everything and click bring to front and then underneath the workflow i click the empty box and when the page is loaded only when the current user's admin is yes only then i hide the shape to reveal what's behind it and what's behind it i could have several links i can use as an admin to quickly navigate between all my different admin pages or I could even use icons and navigate to a certain page if I click a certain icon as this may be even faster. And then if I go back to the test page, so all my admin pages for instance could have this admin header. Okay and by the way to set up this admin what you can do is just go over to user and add a new field called admin yes no make it default no in a similar way you could even have a secondary admin or maybe a community manager yes no and each of them can use all these conditions um, to see certain fields or buttons you then set it up actually in the database you go to app data and then users and then underneath each user when you click admin you can actually set their admin to yes or no be aware though when you click on data here you're actually in the development version so you actually have to click switch to live database to actually make changes to the actual live database so just be aware you're making changes to the right one okay and then of course with these admin fields you can um, you know also add them here underneath the conditions only when current users admin is yes you can make this even clickable or viewable and same underneath all these uh, conditions of only whens but the most uh, secure method is uh, the privacy controls so on this side what i've uh, got is a q and a backend so like a platform like quora where people can ask questions and answers so most things in many apps are actually public but maybe you do want to restrict some things so you could then go over to, for example, answers, and just for answers, make some restrictions. So when the current user's admin is yes, you can, for example, click that everything is possible. So viewing all fields, finding it in searches and viewing attached files, or when the current user is logged in. By the way, if you unclick view all fields, then you can show that whenever the current user is logged in, they can see the question text and create a date and maybe if the user is not logged in they cannot see the text or something and yeah you can go through all the fields doing this to make sure that not everyone can see everything by the way um in some cases like here 
both conditions can be true or maybe only one condition is true so as soon as the user is logged in and for example everything is clicked here then every user who's logged in has um, these settings applied to them so make sure that if you have four conditions even if only one of them allows for something uh, if that one applies it applies to all users who fulfill that condition and what's quite useful you can also of course do for all the conditions which are kind of not above you can set the rest of the permissions to make sure that not everyone for example if you have a messaging app can see everyone's messages but only the ones involved in creating that message or being part of the group of or list of users who are within that message okay and of course you can also restrict only certain fields so for example if you have some analytics data maybe that can only be seen by the admin or by the kind of company who is making the account but not by other companies so you can add all these conditions for every data type here and uh, then you might have been wondering what allow auto binding means so a good example of this is you can actually go over to plugins and one of the plugins which uses this a lot is the rich text editor which is just a way to edit edit lots of text so you might see this if you are answering on quora or on medium or on google docs things are automatically saved so this is done via auto binding so normally to save something you would click a button like this answer button and then it actually has a workflow along with it to save it but auto binding means that without a workflow things are still saved so actually you have to click enable auto binding on parent elements thing and then feel to modify text so then whenever i type something in and move my mouse over it'll immediately save it and then this is where i controlled it underneath privacy i would have to allow auto binding for example for people who are logged in for instance and then actually have to select it for the fields that are relevant in this case it was the question text field and i can also by the way insert an alert which shows users ah uh, they've saved their question whenever uh, there's a successful saving has taken place so how this looks is just it says here test test and i move my mouse over and it says here and here at the bottom we see it's actually been changed and here again we're showing it's changed and it says saved so that's the auto binding feature for which privacy rules are also used so as always this whole um, kind of compilation of tips is uh, has been saved uh, to a list on tiplister.com vote for the one which helped you most in this video and hopefully you can find some more useful bubble tips on the site hope this video helped cheers have a good day